Hey, what is going on, crypto people? It is Steve Crypto Siege with another day in the life, in the crazy life that is the digital asset space. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to each and every one of you. Happy Thursday. Oh, well, Rosalind Layton. Rosalind Layton calling out the SEC once again and filed the motion to intervene in the SEC versus Ripple case. Shout out to Jimmy James K. Filing for sharing that with the community. <laughs> We're going to get into why Rosalind Layton's latest article on Forbes was removed immediately after it was uploaded. <laughs> It was removed, taken down immediately after it was uploaded. And why do you think that is? We're going to cover that for you guys in just a few. So listen, guys, this is XRP Ripple Daily News in around zero to 10 minutes. Let's get into it. Listen, the market is just doing what the market does. We're going to go with the numbers, but it's just doing what the market does. I got Flair up here. I was looking into Flair again. Purchase some more again. Flair is a monster. Shout out to Mickey B. Fresh. Flair is hooked up with Google partnership with Google or an ARM division of Google, which is the same thing in my opinion. Flair is on the move. Bitcoin's in me. What's up? What's up with the Bitcoin numbers? <laughs> is that correct? I have to refresh. I have to refresh that awesomeness. That awesomeness that is CoinGecko.com. Love the Coin Gecko app on my Android phone. Love it. Let's check out these numbers. Yeah. Holy moly, that's correct. Interesting. Interesting. All right. I guess it's time to exit. Exit. It's time to exit out of some stuff. Take advantage of the market. All right, guys. Look, the total cryptocurrency market cap, according to the, to, to the best that there is, CoinGecko.com, is $1.16 trillion. It's up 5.3%. And just... 24 hours. Bitcoin dominance is at 40.7%, which means not a great number for the altcoin bull run. Just not a great number. Bitcoin is trading at $24,501. <laughs> Ethereum is trading at $1,686. And XRP is trading at 39 cents. Now, we got some, let's see if we got any double figure seven day gainers. Do we have any? Double, we need double figures. Lido Dow, the LDL token is up 10%. Adara Hashgraph is up 18.9% on the seven day, trading at eight cents. That is pretty, pretty cool. Anything else? That's pretty much it. I mean, I don't, what is Mina? What, I don't know what Mina protocol is. I hope there's some people who do know about it. I hope we're, we're helping to create a new 1% over there at MENA. Immutable X, I know about that one. Love, love Immutable, Immutable X, love it. Because, you know, we're, 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 we're DeFi. We're DeFi in the crypto siege at home. Absolutely. Immutable X is up 15.8% on a seven-day trading at $1.18. So that is the market, guys, because, you know, oh, Dash is up. Yeah. My dash is, you know, where my dash lies. Celsius, Celsius Network. Celsius Network. Well, oh, God. Anyway, quick update on Celsius. Bid uh, proposal framework. Framework from Nova Wolf. It's been submitted into the court, into the Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Just a framework. Not the final, not the, not the, nothing's been voted on yet, but it looks like they have leaned in on Nova Wolf as the sponsor for the new code. We'll see how it goes. I'll keep you guys updated. Not great stuff coming from the loans um, people. Not great. It's not great. It's not, it's not great. It's just not great. It's, it's close to horrible. But it didn't, in any case, look, bids for the loans is still available. So I like that. It's, that's still going on. Dash up 17.4% on the seven day trading at $75. Yeah. So that's the market, guys. The market's doing what the market does. Jimmy James finally shares something. I want to share this with you guys. 
Breaking. He get, he put the big breaking in all capitals. That's, that's unlike Jimmy James K. Filing, but he did do it. Rosalind Leighton, Forbes, contributing, art, uh, contributing writer at Forbes, has filed a motion to intervene to petition the court for access to the Henman speech document. I don't know if this was after she wrote the article, <laughs> why the SEC treats Ethereum different than Ripple or before. I don't know which one it is, but there it is. There it is, guys. Oh, I got to get to the gym. What's going on? What's going on right now? I got to get to the gym in a big time way. So there it is. Breaking news. And attorney J. Carl uh, Sassir was filed a motion for admission pro hack or hack vice on behalf of Rosalind Layton. I am a member in good standing in the State Bar of Texas. Love it, love it here in Texas. I just got to tell you that. So there it is. Rosalind Layton has filed a motion to petition the court for access to the Henman speech documents. Let's go over this for just a bit. Very, very interesting. Then I'm going to get into the real deal, which is, in my opinion, the article that she wrote in Forbes. Mm, that old Dropbox thing. I got my Dropbox open. Let's see if it'll. Jimmy James in the book. And, and there it is. In the Dropbox things, uh, Honorable Lisa Torres. Reference SLC versus Triple Last. Dear Judge Torres, Rosin Layton, PhD. By and through the undersigned counsel, seeks to seeks lead to intervene in this case to petition the court for access to a set of internal SEC documents relating to a speech that former SEC Director of Corporate Finance William Hinman gave in June of 2018. The quote unquote Hinman speech documents. On December 22nd, 2022, the SEC moved to seal some of the Hinman speech documents that it offered in support of its summary judgment motions. Along with any of those documents, defendants might reference in their opposition. Dr. Layton opposes that motion. Dr. Layton, the columnist and regulatory policy scholar, is a visiting researcher at Al Borg University and executive vice president of Strand Consulting and a senior contributor to Forbes.com. Dr. Layton has no financial stake in Ripple or XRP and no financial interest in this case, but she has written numerous articles about the Hemis speech documents. In those articles, she has examined the central role those documents play in this enormously significant case, which she has... Hmm, which she has, uh, something blank like there. Dot Layton is entitled to raise the petition as a member of the press, which has standing to intervene in actions to which it is otherwise not a party in order to petition for access to court proceedings and records. And he's got all this bunch of different stuff there. She, uh, the, the attorney for Miss Layton is referencing some cases. It says here, and Judge Kaplan recently granted members of the press leave to intervene through similar petition in the United States versus Bankman Freed. There it is there. Uh, what she has, okay, there's what she has dubbed the cryptocurrency trial of the century. She therefore specifically requests leave to intervene so she might ask the court to release this documents to the public and to deny the SEC's motion to keep them seal. And then they got the arguments here, but this is absolutely outstanding stuff. And again, I don't know why other digital asset CEOs and our founders are not doing the same thing. Press the court, if you will, to release these on behalf of the public. This is really, really good stuff. Now let's go over now, Rosalind Layton wrote this article here, right? Where is this article? She wrote an article in its uh, title, Why the SEC Treats Ripple 
and Ethereum differently. And by the way, Crypto Eddie reminded us that this is the second time this has happened where she's written an article about the SEC and it has been immediately taken down. Crypto Eddie tweeted out, it happened again just after we had inter just it happened again just after we had an intervention by Dr. Rosenly. Maybe that's why it's been taken out. So it's after she filed for this intervention, a Forbes article why the SEC triples ripple and Ethereum differently was removed in the last hour. This is turning into a real dog fight, says Crypto Eddie. Here's the article. Shout out to Kevin Smith. And someone else, um, uh, uh, Stefan Huber, literally took the article and tweeted the article out in his in a Twitter thread. Literally just tweeted it out. Shout out to that dude. I guess he types really, really well. Because this whole two-finger thing, that's my deal, the two-finger deal. That won't cut it. <laughs> it takes too long. So we're going to go over this article. But I'm going to tell you the reason in the end why that article the real reason why that article was taken down let's see where is the article i had the article up let's go here check this out shout out to kevin smith at kgs brainstorm for sharing i'm telling you just the, the digital asset space i'm telling you the community overall in the digital asset space is amazing they didn't expect this. JP Morgan, Alibaba, William Hedman, Jay Clayton did not expect this. They thought they could gonna just get over. Here's the article. Regulators aren't supposed to choose the market's winners and losers, yet it's hard to ignore how securities laws are, are applied differently to the Ethereum Foundation compared to companies like Ripple. As the Securities and Exchange Commission case against Ripple Labs winds down after more than two years of public scrutiny, a judge in the Southern District of New York contemplates whether judges will unseal the Hemin speech documents. The documents refer to a 2018 speech by then SEC Director of Corporate Finance, William Hemin, which absent explicit regulatory guidance constitutes the best public instruction for crypto stakeholders to avoid an enforcement action. The speech seems inscrutable. It declared one crypto asset, Ethereum's native, native token, Ether, as outside the securities law. Subsequently, the SEC launched a case against a similar project to Ethereum, Ripple, seeking billions in penalties for a virtually identical offering that reasonably appeared to fit Hitman's criteria for ETH. As a regulatory scholar, I am concerned about the inconsistency. <laughs> a conflict of interest explanation suggests that Hitman had a financial stake in an entity promoting Ether over competing uh, coins like XRP. There are some of those in the media who think that this is just all conspiracy. Separately, the government watchdog organization Empower Oversight sued the SEC to obtain materials that show him and received millions of dollars in retirement payments from his former law firm. Simpson, Thatcher, and Bartlett, and that STP, STB, joined, which is Simpson, Thatcher, and Bartlett, joined an alliance devoted to the exclusive promotion of Ethereum. And even that SEC warned Hinman about the appearance of such conflicts. Remember, the internal people at the SEC the ethics people told the dude about the appearance of conflict and he ignored it. Why? Because he's getting paid. The question is who paid him and why? And it goes beyond Simpson, Thatcher, and Bartlett if you're paying attention. 
In any event, unsealing the speech documents could clarify whether Ethereum's proponents influence him in speech. While him and himself starts the speech by saying that it only reflects his view, not the SEC's. The unsealing could show whether SEC officials had a view on the matter. Typically, such speeches are approved by agency counsel before going public. Such findings, such findings could strengthen the defense's claim that the SEC failed to provide fair notice. <laughs> if the SEC itself was confused or ambivalent about crypto policy, it follows that innovators and investors could be as well. The case serves as an important referendum on regulation by enforcement, as defined by Carol R. Goforth in Regulation by Enforcement, problem with the SEC's approach to crypto asset regulation. At issue are critical legal questions of whether the pursuit of enforcement against an innovative technologies for lack of compliance and other purported harms are legitimate use of taxpayer resources versus a forthright delineation, delineation of policy by the SEC, if not Congress. To seal or unseal the battle of motions to seal or unseal is a common debate in federal regulatory litigation. Former General Counsel Banking Regulator Thomas Varnation explains, while transparency protects a free flow of information in the agency process, courts will often be asked to decide if privilege is being overused, if the privilege is being overused. Courts may examine the evidence at issue in camera so it is only seen by a judge who can then determine the legitimate boundaries of the protection with specific knowledge of the information in question. Interesting, interesting, interesting article from Roz and Layton. But again, the I think it's I think it's very, very interesting that uh This was taken down immediately after, apparently. Let me see if he, he, this is Mr. Huber. Let's see if he did anything different. Nope, it's the exact same thing. So in my opinion, this is massive that she she filed a motion to intervene to unseal those documents. I think that's absolutely massive and it's important. And we would hope that more people would look to do that. The challenge is 90 something percent of projects, 80 something percent of projects are based upon the Ethereum on there in a blockchain, right? Free pass is a free pass. You know, the move to front run uh, or, uh, or, or gain a monopoly position in the digital asset space cannot go unfounded. And the fact that US agency officials participated in such a scheme is unacceptable and will be exposed. It will be exposed. This is why Brad Garlinghouse put out the tweet saying that the SEC is you, the SEC wants to purport itself as uh, you know being transparent and having transparency. But if you get a hold of if you get if you're able to get a hold of those documents, it'll change your mind quickly. And I'm paraphrasing, but that's essentially what he said. But I'm going to tell you what I believe the real reason why that article was taken down and the real reason why the lawsuit from the SEC came. Take a listen to David Schwartz, CTO of Ripple. Now, remember, he is quoted, and he did a video just like this, where he quoted, imagine a scenario where a ledger and a blockchain can move anything of value, can move anything of value in three to five seconds for less than a penny. That, my friends, is the XRP ledger. Anything, move anything of value. We all know we're going into tokenizing. and everything's going to be tokenized, everything. It, the ledger can move anything of value in three to five seconds for less than a penny. 
I'm sharing another interesting video here from David. Take this out. Uh, thing. Swift, it's not like Swift is making a whole bunch of money, right? Swift is basically almost like a money neutral uh, thing. It, we didn't, it was not like we wanted to take over this lucrative pay, business. Um, we just needed it to, we needed things to work better in order for us to, to, to like get people to use a cryptocurrency for payment. And so we built this system, RippleNet. Um, and, and we, you know, we, we looked at all the problems that we brought the failure rate down. We brought the settlement time down. Even it's crazy, but end to end messaging prior to a payment is revolutionary. Which is think about that. First of all, we brought the settlement time down, we brought the error rate down. And this is the ripple net, right? Ripple net, the network of banks and institutions and that technology there having to deal with the messaging system. We brought the settlement time down, we brought the um error rate down because the swift network's messaging system error rate is just not great this is from the company ripple what they're doing the company ripple it's the d it's the dis it's the d in disruptor swift it's it's right it's disrupting the swift network what is the swift network over ten thousand banks what makes up some of those banks? Some of the top banking, bank financial systems in the world, in the world, are on the SWIFT network. Just, it's ridiculous. Like you go to a bank and you tell them you want to make an international payment. You tell them, how much is this going to cost me? Oh, we don't know. How much money is going to be delivered? Oh, we don't know. Because <laughs> there's no messaging, right? The money is just sort of pushed down a pipe and eventually something will come out the other side. And a significant fraction of payments that don't fail, still the customer calls to check on the payment because they don't know. Because they'll tell you it takes three to six business days. So when do you call them? I mean, it's just. <laughs> it's going to take three to six business days. So why do you call them? And so my humble opinion, this SEC lawsuit, all the things that took place at um, the SEC and this um, free pass that we have been talking about, and uh, then William him and speech being attached to Simon Thatcher and the Simon Thatcher and Bartlett being um, uh, members of the Ethereum Alliance, it all points to one of the biggest scams in the history of the digital asset space, and it will get exposed because the truth is on our side. That the fact of the matter is, things like this happen all the time. It's just that we caught it. We caught this one. We caught the scam. We caught the get over. We caught the trying to monopolize, monopoly, you know, and form a monopoly over there. We caught it. That is the bottom line. And the like when you when you know that the likes of J.P. Morgan and Joseph Lubin are involved, you you, you just know it's wrought with fraud and scam and trying to get over. And that's what it is. But it's the great disruptor, Ripple Company, Ripple Net, the XRP ledger that can move anything of value in three to five seconds for less than a penny. You can just put it down in the books. That is the great disruptor. All right, guys, listen, I'm going to end this video. Uh, this wraps up your XRP Ripple Daily News in around zero to 10 minutes, I should say. I hope it has been a. <laughs> Excuse me. I hope that it has been of value to you. If it has, do me a favor. <clears throat> Hit that like button so we can get the YouTube algorithm working in our favor. Good favor, because we got to get this channel out to more people who don't know that SEC officials are not working on behalf of the public, that they're doing stuff on their behalf and their personal financial gain, for their personal financial gain, and not serving the public. We, we got to let people know about that. So hit that like button because we need a new 1%. We got to make change. And the only way we can do that is creating a new 1%, to be honest with you. And the way that we can participate in doing that is hitting that like button, getting this channel out to more people. If you enjoyed the Hangout, do me a favor, please consider subscribing to the channel. And don't forget to ring that uh, bell so that you know whenever we go live or whenever we upload a video. I'm going to end this video like I do all of my videos and remind you guys of this old money doesn't want you to win they don't want us to win 
They would rather that we remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in where we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. The digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Are you participating or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know, that the battle for you has already been fought and the victory is yours. Go get it.